Okay, hello, welcome. Thanks uh, all for coming and for inviting me. Uh, my name is Manon. And today I will tell you something about my graduation project called In Limbo Embassy. Uh, but first I will tell you a bit more about myself and my way of working. Um, when I got invited for uh, being here and, and telling something about my project, I uh, thought of the word crisis because normally a revolution starts after uh, uh, a crisis. And then I found a really interesting uh, thing in the dictionary. Um, the meaning of crisis reversal or turning points. And for me, the most interesting one was the second one. State in which old habits uh, are insufficient for a harmonious solution to arise in difficult. So maybe overcoming a crisis is just letting go of our old habits. Um, I studied at the Design Academy in Eindhoven. And of course, this is known as a product design school. Um, but in my second year, I think, we uh, had to do a project in Woensel, which is a neighborhood in Eindhoven. And actually, um, after that project, I knew I was not going to be a product designer and I was going to do something else. Uh, what I did, we had to do a research there. And I heard a lot of people in the neighborhood complaining, like, yeah, people don't know each other's neighbors anymore. And, um, social cohesion is leaking here and it used to be better back in the days. And then I found out saying oh, it was way better back in the days is something that happens in every culture. So in Africa, they also say oh, it was much better back in the days. And, but they also already said that 100 years ago. So it's something that is of all times. And um, actually, usually it means that people just long back for their youth in the time that, uh, of course, you know, all the kids in your street and... Um, yeah, you don't really have so much responsibility because your parents are taking care of you. And then I thought, okay, I need to do something so people in this neighborhood uh, are going to talk about this uh, and at least talk to each other. And normally I don't really believe in this, bar uh, this neighborhood barbecue thing. So I thought, okay, I have to start a rumor. So what I did, I baked 40 apple pies. Um, and on one night I just rang the doorbells uh, in that neighborhood and I told them, hey, uh, I have to give this uh, to your neighbor. Uh, he would like to have the, the, the plate returned because they were served on a second-hand plate. Um, and then that night, the whole area thought they received an apple pie from their grumpy old neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and some people didn't really trust it, so they called uh, half of the neighborhood. One uh, old lady was so surprised that she rang every doorbell of her street with their pie in her hands, like, did I get this from you? Uh, so actually, I think it kind of worked, and, and yeah, this was a really short project, but I enjoyed it so much that I thought, okay, I want to do stuff like this, not physically making products, but uh, doing more social projects. Um, so for my graduation project, I got in contact with the We Are Here group. I think most of you uh, heard about it. It's a group of uh, refugees living in Amsterdam, and they're in, an, in limbo status, which means uh, they applied for asylum, uh, they got rejected, uh, but their country of origin, for example, doesn't recognize them anymore as a citizen or it's still very dangerous. So, uh, yeah, in limbo means not here, not there. So you're in an in-between waiting uh, state. Yeah, I will um, tell you about three topics within this project. Steering the intended audience through creating their own solutions, generating and filtering news and information, and rethinking laws and exploiting loopholes. Within my uh, research uh, that I did uh, when I was following the, the group or part of the group for four months, I discovered uh, two, so to say, problems. Um, one of them is, is that uh, the news, uh, the media writes a lot about them, but still they don't really feel represented. They often don't really agree what is uh, written about them. And the other thing is that, of course, there are volunteers that help out and bring food, but there are a lot of people that 
enter this building. Oh, this is really a light. Uh, that enter this building, and as you can see, it's kind of empty. Uh, uh, there's trash, there are mattresses on the, on the floor. And if you enter, you don't really know who to talk to, so it feels kind of unsafe to enter a, a squatted building like this. Um, so, yeah, there's not so much contact actually between society and the refugees. And then I, um, I was trying to find some loopholes, because of course they don't really have so much rights. And then I thought, can we just build a huge, big-ass embassy and just all put them there, just like Julian Assange, because then they're all safe. Because as you know, an embassy is kind of a different piece of land, and then you're protected, so the police cannot just enter like that. They have to ask permission. But then, of course, I found out you have to become a state, and if you want to become a state, <laughs> that's kind of difficult, because then all other states have to agree with you being a state. Um, but actually, in the end, I found out it's really good that we're not a real embassy and an art project, but uh, I'll tell you about that later. But what the originals did, they just actually um, planted a, um, an umbrella and claimed in 1971, this is our embassy, because of course, they kind of got kicked out by uh, the new uh, Australians. Um, and this still exists today, it's, it got quite big. Uh, and of course, they're also not a real embassy, but they're extremely visible and everybody in Australia and Canberra knows about this group. Um, so then together um, with the refugees we are here, uh, we thought, okay, let's become our own embassy and if we can completely uh, create our own rules, what should this embassy be and look like? And we thought of building a movable embassy so we can just go around uh, the Netherlands and maybe even outside of the Netherlands to um, yeah, spread who they are, why they are here, why they're stuck, and to kind of spark debate about this, uh, this topic. So this is the, the movable embassy. Um, and this is the inside. So yeah, it, it feels like a real proper, uh, very powerful, almost regal thing. And that's also, um, actually that's one of my teachers said, yeah, Manon, it doesn't really look like a design project. That looks like a real embassy. I think that's not really the idea. And I said, yeah, it is the idea, because for, especially for the refugees to feel that it's a real embassy, it should look like a, an embassy that we all know, that it's really with a flag and with these this official portraits. Um, and then in collaboration with Alexander Populier, which is a photographer from Ghent, Belgium, uh, we created official <coughs> portraits. Um, and normally a blank is a sign of poverty and you see in, an, in the news these refugees that come out of the boat with a blanket and we try to fold it in such a way that it looks like a kingscape also to play a bit with the idea of a, of a real embassy and the nice thing about this is um, that together with a lawyer I found some, some loopholes and one of them is um, yeah, let's say refugees are not allowed to work also not voluntary jobs so they're just doing nothing all day and of course a lot of people get depressed and this is really a big issue. But then I found out that um, they do have freedom of press, which means that if they print stuff which has a political opinion, then they're allowed to sell it on the streets because it falls under the freedom of um, press. And if you can call it art, so if I would do this and I say, I say this is a performance, then it's art and you could pay me guys for doing that. So working in the embassy is a sort of a performance and a and an act, so it's not real work, so they're artists. So the only profession that they can have is being artists. So the embassy is not only in the building that you just saw, it's also an exhibition, uh, debates. And here you see the opening of an exhibition in Wau, wow, Amsterdam. Um, and yeah, what I wanted to say with this first topic is that I try to really include them in, okay, if you could think of something new, uh, if you could make the rules of your embassy, what would it be? And here you see a, you see a Mufti, which is our uh, news reporter, is one of the ambassadors. The second topic is generating and filtering news and information. Yeah, as you probably all know, we live in an information abundance, so it's, at least for me, it's kind of difficult to, to know what information we can trust. So if you think about the numbers of refugees that are uh, being expected all the time, Usually these numbers are wrong, or then half a year later say, oh no, it was not 30,000, it was only 10,000. And I think, oh, that's kind of a big difference. Um, and here you see uh, an image, um, which was um, 
in the news on July 9th in 2008, and you see um, four uh, uh, missiles. And then a few days later, they, they found out that there were actually only three. So one guy just photoshopped another one. And like it's spread all over the world and nobody really checked it. So yeah, what we do want to do with the embassy is to also provide really clear and honest information. And yeah, that also is not only um, from reporters, but also from the ambassadors, the refugees uh, themselves. So that's also why we created um, this was an exposition in Milan, and of course I cannot, couldn't really take the ambassadors uh, here to Milan because that's illegal. <laughs> so um, what we did is uh, we, we built a small printer which was connected to a SIM card, and um, I gave them credit for their phone because they all have a phone because that's like the, actually the most important possession because it's the only way to get in touch with friends and family and yeah to to. Uh, communicate with others. And um, when they would send a text message with like a news item of things that they find important, they were printed live during the exposition. So it was actually live news feeds. Um, this is a bit what it looks like. And um, what I told you, this freedom of press and this printing, uh, I asked a lawyer, um, so if I would build, um, or create our own um, printing line or um, a company where we make prints and the, the, the government would pass by and um, can they give us a fine because can we then just not say okay we're doing a performance this is not actual work so that's why we made a movie of uh, them making uh, their own uh, official portraits <laughs> quality but you can also check it online if you want um, we're also trying to explore now when the government calls something uh, printed matter so if you print something 3d is it still allowed to sell it and also for example it's kind of difficult to get a permit to uh, put the, the embassy somewhere so we're now trying to find out when the municipality calls it parking and when it's very slowly driving, so maybe like if we move it every two minutes, um, yeah, then we can, then it's allowed. Yeah, and of course with this project we can continue with a lot of things like uh, alternative passports that you have in New York City now, you have this New York citizen citizenship, which means that illegal immigrants uh, are not citizens of uh, America, but of uh, the city New York, and which means that they can open a bank account, uh, for example. So we're also researching these new ideas, and that's also why we, we start these debates to yeah, create and generate new ideas uh, around citizenship. And uh, yeah, of course, you also have alternative earning systems. Um, um, we're also planning on uh, making uh, flags. And in a few weeks, we're going to start a crowdfunding campaign because um, we got selected for the Dutch Design Awards. And we thought actually the Dutch Design Week in Eindhoven is a perfect opportunity to, to be there for a week and have the embassy up and running. Um, and for that, um, we need some money. For example, the, the embassy, uh, two weeks ago, some Syrian refugees broke in and they, <laughs> they spent the night there in the embassy, which I thought was actually pretty fun. <laughs> but now it's kind of broken, so uh, yeah, we need to fix it and uh, yeah, we need to build a campaign. So uh, I hope um, we can all stay in touch and that you're willing to, uh, to help out. Um, yeah, with all my projects, I intend to raise awareness, expose assumption, provoke action, and spark debate. And um, yeah, I think that's it.
Thanks for having me. <laughs>